we are now moving into the next chapter. And we're starting kind of in the same place we were before, but we're really quickly going to go in a new direction. The idea here is to talk about a free particle. The idea of a free particle is that the potential equals zero for all x. You could imagine that the potential maybe equals 2 eV for all x, but we always get to kind of set the zero wherever we want. Just like right now, I would might refer to a height as being the distance above the floor, but the studio is actually above the ground. So again, I can kind of set my zero to wherever I want, so if the potential is the same everywhere, we would just call that zero. So when I think about that energy eigenvalue equation, that means this term is zero. So I'm then left with my second derivative of my energy eigenstate is being equal to, right, I've, this is zero, so that's gone away. This I have multiplied up, so 2m over h bar squared e phi e x. This should look familiar. This is the same thing we saw when a particle was in a well. And so we talked about different types of solutions then. And you've done homework problems where you think about, okay, the sinusoidal versus the complex exponential form. So we can write this if we choose to, and I'm always trying to make sure I'm getting this right, as k squared is equal to 2me over h bar squared. So we can then say that our solution is going to be a, remember those coefficients, e to the plus i k x, I want to make sure I'm matching the notation in the book as well, plus b e to the negative i k x. So, great, we have already done this, but for the infinite well, we then said, okay, we can rewrite this as sine and cosine, and based on the coordinate system that we're choosing, if we set one of those wells to be zero, we have boundary conditions, we can throw one term away, we can normalize it. So normally, where did these coefficients come from? Boundary conditions and normalization. So let's think about what that means for the free particle. Are there any boundary conditions? No, there's basically not a boundary. The second problem is normalization. That now it's not confined to be anywhere, so it's confined to be in all s confined. It's in all space. So that integral literally needs to be from x equals negative infinity to infinity. So we don't even have to do out the math. You can just think through that process. If the particle has equal probability of being in all space, and we have an infinitely long space, that basically means your probability has to be 1 over infinity. As a physicist, I'm comfortable doing that. 1 over infinity is 0. Mathematicians would do it a fancy way, but you know. So we run into a problem here that we don't have boundary conditions to actually constrain a and b, and it looks like our normalization coefficient should be 0. So this is where we now have to take a little bit of a left turn and introduce some new ideas. And the answer is, is that in a way, it's not meaningful to talk about a single free, param uh, free particle in all of space and just ask questions about it. A particle filling all of space, where space is defined as basically being nothing, well, that's not really an interesting question. That's not really a relevant question, because space is stuff in it. And so free particles that are really con like just everywhere, well, who cares? So. Instead, we're going to think about free particles that behave a little more like re real particles, right? If I have an electron, we're used to thinking about that electron as a particle, which means it is vaguely somewhere, not literally filling all of space. So to give you a preview of where we're going, we are going to be talking now much more about momentum and thinking about how momentum relates to energy. And these aren't going to be like standing waves anymore. They're going to be more like traveling waves. And then we're going to be able to make wave packets out of them. Now, I really love wave packets because I think it makes all of this make much more sense. And if you can think about wave packets in terms of Fourier analysis, you can understand a lot of quantum mechanics. Now, the challenge is Fourier analysis involves a bunch of hard integration, similar to what we were doing last chapter with breaking um, wave functions into a super, uh, an infinite sum of energy eigenstates. So 
now, instead of it being energy eigenstates, where those are each standing waves, basically, meaning that they don't have a net motion left or right, now we're going to have net motion. So for instance, our particle is moving to the right. So that might look like a momentum eigenstate rather than an energy eigenstate. And then we can build up a wave packet out of that. So there's some similarities here. And again, this is going to be then a better model for what particles are really like. So I love this topic, but you do again need to be ready for some, some hard integration. And I find that working with some simula simulations to do this visualization can be really helpful.